This is a sad story of how mankind, having created an environmental problem, tries to get around that problem, only to create another, and it looks as though to get around that environmental problem, yet another one is about to be created. Jakarta is Indonesia's capital city and home to 10 million people. It is sinking fast at an average of 1 to 15 centimetres a year, and models predict that 95% of North Jakarta will be submerged by 2050. Already over half the city is sitting below sea level. The worst hit area is North Jakarta, which has sunk by 2.5 metres in 10 years, and in some areas is continuing to sink by as much as 25 centimetres a year. So why is Jakarta sinking? Well, the city grew rapidly in population after the 1970s oil boom, seeing the wider metro region tripling in 50 years. Piped water services only reach around 40% of the population and are concentrated in the relatively wealthy areas in south and central Jakarta. There are many rivers that flow through Jakarta to the sea and could be used as a source of water, but the water is polluted with untreated sewage and industrial effluent. Local residents, businesses and even some government buildings get their water supply by sinking boreholes into the aquifer beneath the city. Aquifers are the saturated zone beneath the water table and are huge storehouses of water. Because this groundwater lives in the little spaces between grains of sediment, it actually helps support the grains and keep those spaces open. As water level drops, the drain spaces lose that support and can collapse in, compacting the sediment, which leads to subsidence. Water management authorities can only meet 40% of Jakarta's demand for water, so people have resorted to using their own pumps to extract what they need. The local government has only recently admitted it has a problem with the illegal groundwater extraction. Ideally, everyone should have a license, so authorities can then measure how much groundwater is being extracted. Jakarta is by no means the only sinking city in the world. Cities such as Venice, London and Houston are also experiencing the problem. Jakarta has always flooded, even before subsidence, due to much of the city being close to sea level. The 13 rivers that flow through the metropolitan area take a long time to drain into Jakarta Bay. So even relatively short periods of heavy rain cause water to build up and this is being exacerbated by sea level rise. To help manage this flooding, two canals were built to divert the water flowing in the rivers from the south around the city and into the sea. These canals are known as the West Flood Canal and the East Flood Canal. Other measures to control floods in Jakarta include reservoirs and pumps in areas below sea level. In North Jakarta there is a 2.3 km seawall which was built in 2002, but a 170 metre stretch near Marara Burai collapsed in 2019 causing flooding in that area. It had already been reinforced and increased in height after the Great Flood in 2007. There is a plan for a giant seawall to be built offshore. It is to be 32 kilometres long, with 17 artificial islands. The name given to the wall is the Great Garuda, as it resembles the shape of a Garuda, a bird creature from Hindu mythology. The plan is to create an artificial lagoon in which water levels can be lowered to allow the city's rivers to drain. However, some have expressed concerns that it will only buy Jakarta an extra 20 to 30 years to stop the long-term subsidence, and that what needs to be done is to stop taking the groundwater. Another concern was that this would just produce a lagoon full of sewage. The plans for the wall have changed, and the new design has a 2,000 hectare reclamation project in the Jakarta Bay, and a 20 kilometre outer sea dike that functions as a toll road. The design team was open to feedback until February 2020. As to what is happening now, I simply can't find any information on. I suspect that, until the pandemic is over, there will be little movement forward on the construction. What actually needs to be done is for the rivers, dams and lakes to be cleaned and these used as water sources for the population. However, Harry Andres from Bandung Institute of Technology says it could take up to 10 years to clean these waterways and get the water piped anywhere. In August 2019, Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, made an interesting announcement that the capital will move from Jakarta to the province of East Kalimantan on the island of Borneo which is nearly a thousand miles away. However, not the whole city is moving. It will just be the government administration, with new offices and homes being built for around 1.5 million civil servants, with construction starting in 2021. Jakarta will continue to be the nation's commercial and financial centre, and its 10 million residents would also stay in Jakarta.
It is hoped that this move will help alleviate some of the strain that the city of Jakarta is experiencing. But to build the new city, hundreds of thousands of acres of land need to be developed and there is concern what impact this will have on the environment. Indonesia's planning minister has promised not to clear any protected forests. Notice the word protected used here. It does not mean no deforestation. Even if no deforestation did take place, most land in Kalimantan is peatland, and if it is developed, it presents its own environmental problem. Peatlands form when dead plants do not fully decay in acidic or anaerobic soils. Organic matter gradually accumulates layer upon layer over hundreds or even thousands of years. This amounts to a huge carbon store. This peatland is associated with the forest, forming what is called peat swamp forest. Natural peat swamp forests act as a carbon sink accumulating at least 2.6 tonnes per hectare of carbon dioxide per year as a consequence of the tree growth and peat accumulation. Indonesia has some 36% of the world's tropical peatlands, which store up to 20 times more carbon than non-peat mineral soils. If deforestation has occurred, the peatland may still remain, but if it is drained for plantations or urban development, then plant material begins to decompose, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change. So the concern of environmentalists, even if land with forests are not used, any form of land use change on tropical peatland, such as drainage, will lead to a massive loss of carbon from the peat store. Two sites have been named as potential areas for this development. One is Bukit Sahato in East Kalimantan, which is a 61,850 hectare forest called the Bukit Sahato Grand Forest Park, which functions as a conservation area. The good thing for the government is that because it is state-owned, they would not have to spend any money on acquiring the land. A presidential spokesperson said that a joint team of officials from relevant ministries and state institutions would be tasked with spearheading the further assessment of each location considered for the new capital, and that the assessment will be extensive not only in terms of demography or geography, but will also cover the environmental assessment, such as to find out whether or not cutting down forest areas would cause floods. The team would be responsible for advising the president on which location was most suitable for setting up a new political and administrative hub. I am possibly being naive here, but wouldn't it be better to clean up the rivers and use them as the source of water for the population so as not to use the groundwater? Wouldn't that stop the subsidence? Wouldn't the sea wall help with the flooding and then a new development wouldn't be needed? Something has to be done for the population of Jakarta, as only government officials would be moving to Borneo. So why not focus on strategies for saving Jakarta, rather than developing a new city, wreaking yet more havoc on the island of Borneo?